Welcome everyone to Touching Base. I'm your host, Eric Arnold. And today I'm joined by my friends, Andy Inc., Andrew Naw, and Joe Olson. Where we like to get together once a week and enjoy a beverage and kind of catch up on the week um, of sports. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Doing great. great. Thank you. All right, as we always start off, what are we drinking tonight? I've got the 16 pointer here from Devil's Backbone. Nice. Yeah, local brew. Lexington, Virginia. I got the uh, Sour Monkey. Oh, yeah. That's the second time we've done that. Have, have you had it before? You no, know, I got sour, so. Oh, that's right. Okay, golden and you got a golden sour. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. Um, I am still uh, chipping away at the old land chart collection, but tis the season, so there's no, no issues there. And, and I actually am not drinking a beer tonight. Um, I, I actually found a Majido. <laughs> um yeah because that was the only thing that we had available um in the cupboard um somebody drank all of our beers you know <laughs> so I, I, I think know. that who be you yeah i don't know we don't need to do it a, you know a long investigation on it we really need to get into the sports let's not get caught up into the semantics um i guess the biggest thing that that has happened that um we are all experts on is there's some soccer news um, that, that took place. Um, unless you guys want to talk about the Jake Paul Ben Askren fiasco, I think one other person on here watched it. Um, you know, a Andy, did you, what were your any thoughts on it uh, before we get into soccer? I couldn't wait to fall asleep fast enough, but it was Neither entertaining. Ben Askren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I don't know. You know, out of all of our viewers who watched it, but it really was every bit of a spectacle and every bit of a show. Um, I think I texted you guys in the first three minutes of it saying, I watched Steve Urkel smoke marijuana with Snoop Dogg. And once again, not Julia White, Steve Urkel playing Steve, you know, in character, uh, smoking his purple Urkel um, to promote his new weed. Then uh, Pete Davidson asked some guy, or I couldn't even tell you who the other celebrity was, um, but asked him to uh, uh, pleasure his mother. Um, and then... I watched the slap boxing contest hosted by Ric Flair. There were some concerts taking place where there's obviously lip singing uh, taking place. And then there were fights on this card um, that were just got awful. Uh, but all that being said, kind of enjoyed myself. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if I'll buy the next one, but I'll look at it. I'll see what else is going. I appreciate the fact they leaned directly into what was an absolute disaster. Um, and, and, I was here for it. Um, but that being said, um, there, there was some actual bigger news going on out there, um, which was the soccer coverage. Um, Joe, can you kind of give us a, a rough idea of what happened? I, I, I'm not, I can't pretend to be a giant soccer fan. I can't really guess what happened. Can you put it in kind of the layman's terms for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and so the, for the American sports fans out there, I mean, the, the different leagues throughout Europe and different soccer leagues, the English league, the German league, the Italian league, the Spanish league, basically all the top teams from those various leagues in Europe uh, that are traditionally at the top of those standings kind of got the owners got together and basically said, OK, like how much money can we get if we all dozen of us combine and we just play each other. Right. And so there's a lot of games that they a lot of matches that they play within their own league that are really not not super enticing on a, on a global scale or even a European scale. And I think that the thought process is, is that they, you know, as, as two, two of the bigger teams, Manchester United and Real Madrid, for instance, they're two of the top teams in both England and Spain. And a lot of the times they're playing in their, you know, respective divisions in England and in Spain and they are hammering teams at the bottom of their divisions right and so in the thought process of the Super League is that they would never have a match for their fans that was not interesting right and so trying to bring it back to American sports we're kind of thinking of it in the context of college football right let's talk about college football for instance and think power five conferences Right. Is this a good idea? Because there are opinions on both sides of the spectrum. It's good. It's bad. Everything in between. Right. So if we're going to bring it back to American sports and college football. Right. Let's say there was just 10 or 12 teams that were going to just detach from the rest of NCAA Division One and they were going to form their own Super League and not play anybody else. 
Is that a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Is it just a money grab? Is it something in between? And that's kind of the idea of the Super League. So I'll turn it over to you guys to give your commentary on if you related it to college football or one of the American sports. So I'll pass it over to Andy to give his comments on that. Now, I was just reading before the show that there's already been at least one or two teams that have either officially or unofficially said they're going to drop out of the Super League already because there's so much backlash Mm -hmm. from the European fans, not just American fans even, because, I mean, really, we have no effect on what's what's going on over there. But there's already backlash enough for them to drop out of it. And it's just, uh, like you said, a money grab. All these teams are just trying to see how much money they can make. And uh, what do you think, Eric? Well, I was going to ask what kind of teams were picked. I mean, I, I recognized a lot of the names that were mentioned on there, but it was it strictly the teams that made the most amount of money. Was it the teams that should that like, were they just the best teams? Were they really just like, are we looking at pretty much the sec or, or was some com- combination and do the players, are they owned by the league or are they owned by those teams? So like if they left, like do all those players come with them? I mean, how does that work? Well, basically, so there was a, there was about half a dozen of them from England in particular, and then a couple from Italy, a couple from Spain, a couple from Germany, right? And they combined, and it was a dozen total, and they are owned by their teams, but they are owned great. The teams are owned by their respective leagues. So the English teams are owned by the English Premier League. The Spanish teams are owned by La Liga, and they are the ones that are – getting money off of these teams playing against not only each other, but the lesser teams within their own league. And so I think that they thought, okay, as an example, Manchester United at the top of the English league playing against Real Madrid several times a year and all the biggest money-making teams that are traditionally at the top of their respective leagues would be the biggest money grab for the owners. And so they're like, you know what, we don't need to be playing the mid and bottom tier teams in each of our country's leagues. And we'll go from there and see where that goes. But an analogy I can try and relate this to as far as American sports. I know baseball is, you know, the lesser of the four major sports, but I remember when interleague play became a huge deal. Like they finally did it. And it was some people that loved it, but there was a lot of baseball purists that were very, very, very against it. And a lot of foreign players are like, no, I don't want to play the national league. if I'm in the American league and vice versa. And I think that's a little bit of what's going on here too, is the fans don't want to play those teams. They want to keep it, local and they want to be able to play the teams that they've always been playing there's been 150 years of history for some of these teams and they're just kind of just throwing that all away yeah that was one of the arguments that i saw in some of the reading about it i did today just because i was trying to get myself informed um a lot of the commentators here in the u.s um mostly uh, nfl related folks are have been talking a lot about it and i've kind of been on my periphery but i dove, dove in on a little bit and um they, the the piece that i was reading from uh, new york times i want to say uh, they they kind of said there's somewhat of a demographic split there. There's the purists or the kind of more elders uh, that grew up, you know, with the local um, national teams at UEPL, the La Ligos, your, you know, whatever, wherever else it is. And there's like the younger generation who, have, you know, here, albeit a shorter intention span, you know, they want to see the better product. They want to see their favorite stars. They want to see their favorite football. They're not as invested. Sport. They haven't been watching it. Forever. Right, right. In the tradition, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's a it's an interesting conversation about revenue sharing, and I know that's come up in a lot of the other sports. They are big on that in the NFL with the parity. Um, we know that that's a thing in baseball because otherwise we essentially have the same thing in baseball, where anybody that can afford to be the, the you know the billionaires would do it, and then you'd have the also rands. And I think that's it's very much a, a, a conversation around revenue sharing. Why did why did they all? I mean, they joined two days ago, and then they just quit the next day, like. Did they not have it all figured out? Like what, what was it, or was it just that much backlash? What happened? I would just say that, you know, I, I think that they all, and by they, I mean the 12 teams that got into this were kind of like, all right, we we're kind of serious about this, but we just want to see what the reaction is and, and we'll take the backlash and go from there. I mean, bringing it back to our world you couldn't send out a like, survey or something beforehand I, I know <laughs> i know it's crazy like, isn't it a, a quick i don't know twitter survey or something like that i don't know <laughs> i mean bringing it back to the u.s i mean think about the power five conferences in college football right this, this is basically it. what this is right it, that's the power five leagues in europe the soccer leagues in europe what if the power five 
leagues in uh, college football took their top dozen or so teams and they said, all right, we're not playing anybody else. These mid teams, these lower teams in the Big Ten, Big 12, SEC. The middle we're just not State playing. versus, you know, uh, Alabama game. We don't need to see the Ohio State Rutgers game every year. You know, that's fine. We'll, we'll scrap that to see an Ohio State Oklahoma game every year. And so that's kind of where they were going with this. And I think they wanted to see what the reaction was. And actually, as of this podcast, the uh, the English teams, all six of them have dropped out. And so this is but clearly not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's- so. Dropping so I just, that, uh, I just think that I just think that the uh, that the football is a good a good analogy because there's like five leagues involved in the Super League, and I think that that would be a good comparison if we're trying to compare something to American sports. Over all right. all right. So that being said, if this really happened in college football, and we're kind of doing this impromptu, what would be? Let's say there's 12 teams. What would be the 12 teams? And we can kind of go in order. We'll, I, I hate to put people right on the pressure, but we're going to do it. Um, I will go first. We'll have Joe, uh, then Naw, and then Ink um, go and essentially pick a team. And we'll, I guess, go three times. And that would be our power 12. Um, so if it were me and I get the very first pick in the new Super League for the NCAA Super League college football, the number one team that I would pick is the University of Alabama. Uh, They have been an absolute powerhouse. They have Nick Saban. They're in the South. It's a giant market. Um, I think no matter what, I would have Alabama um, as my number one seed. Joe? All right. Well, I'll take the easy one and go with Clemson next. I think they've been the near peer to Alabama over the last five years. You know, I I thought about them. The only thing I wonder is, is Clemson big without Dabo Sweeney? If Dabo Sweeney left. But, and, and I don't know if he will or not. And I, I get, I'm sure Alabama is kind of like a, a, in a similar situation. I mean, Clemson, I don't know if they bring it, but I mean, as of right now, sure. You know, they, they've got to be, but I, I do worry about that. I, I think Clemson and Alabama both have a, a situation where the coach left, but I do feel like they'd have a good three or four year. Yeah. Of win they if they're reach. still in the top 12. I mean, let, let's be honest. Yeah. They're, they're still going to be in. They're definitely in that, in that mix. No, who would you take? Um, I'm going to steal just because I know Andy probably won't do it. Uh, and it's still a good choice. The Ohio State University. Oh, my um, gosh. I, I dislike them as much as any of the Don't next Don't you have guy. a cat named Buck Brutus or something? Yeah, that's uh, my wife's from Ohio. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's just in terms of bringing the best, best on best, like they're in that conversation. You can't have a conversation about the best in college football over the last two decades without and all. If the anything, they're, they are a money maker. And that also well, kind sure. of that northern end, you know, because right now we've and got like essentially the south. You know, we've got the, 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 the talent they bring in too. Like those, those, those how many of the, their, you know, their guys go off and get drafted in the first round. They're like, you know, what, what Miami was when, when we were, you know, younger that it's like. Miami is one that's on the back. They might be a third round team for me. Yeah, yeah there might be the third, the 13th team, something like that. But yeah, that's, so my, my pick's the Ohio State, mostly because Andy oh, wouldn't have done it. I mean, I definitely would have done it, but I do agree with it. It's one of those, like, how, where I just hate them. But of all the Northern states, Ohio probably has the most talent football-wise. Maybe Pennsylvania is right there with them. But I, I there'd also be some West Coast swag coming out from Oregon. Is that that's what I, you, you pull an organ. I did. Okay. You're hoping to get that Nike sponsorship. There you go. Okay. Phil Ni- so, so this is where it starts kind of, I mean, honestly getting a little tricky here for me um, because I'm starting to think of like names. I mean, you say in Pennsylvania, made me think of like Penn state, like the way I throw them in there. Um, Cause a moneymaker. Um, I just, I can't quite do it yet. I'm actually going to pull another Southern team as much as I actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I, I, it's going, I, I was originally going to go uh, with the Georgia Bulldogs, um, but I'm actually going to try to hit a different region. Um, and I'm going to hit Oklahoma um, as, a, as a Midwest team um, that would be in my, my power 12 um, that are consistently good. They've got a young leadership. Um, I'm going Oklahoma. Offense, offense, offense. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, in the, in the theme, of, so we've got five teams now. And so in the theme of this is a money-making grab, I'm going to go Notre Dame next. That's a strong choice. I mean, yeah, I mean, not always, not always in the top, but, but they were in the playoff last year and you can't argue that their fan base and their moneymaker is as strong as it gets. So I'm going Notre Dame with that. Six Rudy pick. Rudiger likes your, likes your pick. All right. Andrew Knopf. 
Uh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna revisit the the well that you were going to the SEC well. I think Georgia Bulldogs uh, are a good choice. They are uh, perennially perennially fis frisky. Um, they do some good stuff. They've had some good coaching trees come out of there. Um, you know, some some notable alumni, some strong boosters. Yeah, I think that's uh, Georgia Bulldogs. Some nice looking uniforms. Georgia Bulldogs. It factors in. It really does factor in. It does. I buy myself. I uh, I think I almost got like a, a Georgia. Uh, would, it, would it have been seven? No, nine back in the day when uh, when old Manny Stafford was still running around. Oh yeah, oh, and a, and a promising promising freshman wide receiver called AJ Green. Yeah, what <laughs> he's doing now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I'm going back like Southwest, I guess Texas A&M. Yeah. But Texas A&M, they've really done a good job. You know, a perennial, not quite perennial, but four years on, two years off. You know, they're really in the mix with a lot of it. Okay, you honestly just kind of messed me up a little bit here um, because I was actually looking at like Texas, Baylor, um, you know, kind of looking at some of those teams. USC is on my list. I've only got one more pick um, into this and I, and I don't really want to screw it up. Um, that Texas A&M grab, I, I almost feel like if we were to do a super team, I'd almost want only one team out of Texas because it would just draw so it, it would, I, I think it would just swing. Like, I don't want to split that money. Yeah. You know, I want everybody, you know, in that Texas area going there. Um, and even if I did, I, I don't know if I'd pick the university of Texas over Baylor. I probably would. Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to actually an LSU's out there. Um, Florida, the university of Florida. Oh, God, tough choices. Um, I am actually going to, I worry about LSU consistently getting our league in trouble. I am going to go with the University of Florida and taking the Gators and their proud history. My my family in Georgia will kill me for saying this, but we'll see. If <laughs> <gonna watch. laughs> you know. That's so. that's definitely a strong choice, and I mean, honestly, they haven't been good the last couple of years, but. I'm going to go with Florida State next. And so, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, no, but I, I know that they're fighting back from some down years and everything, but I mean. You didn't take I, Wisconsin. I, you did not take uh, your Badgers. I, 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 I know. Were... I, <laughs> I, I, I got to be realistic. You know, it's okay. But uh, I'll, I'll just. Party, I know those are the debates we can have, but I, I'm going to go with Florida State, you know. It's all a choice. All right, we got two more. We got two more. All right, you want to read the you want to read the names of who we got so far? Yeah, I, I mean, I got I, since I'm up next. I got um, just check my math. I got Alabama, Clemson, the Ohio State, Oregon, Oklahoma, Georgia Bulldogs, Texas A&M, Florida, then Florida State, which I missed Notre Dame. Dame. Notre Dame. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. Which is okay. You can miss them every day. All <laughs> to the Ohio State of Indiana. <laughs> So to that list, um, I'm going to add to go uh, not to, to get rid of our East Coast bias. I'm going to go back back out west and, and grab the the USC Trojans. I mean, what more storied pro, you know college football program? Um, you know the Rose Bowl, uh, hundred however many thousand people they can pack in that stadium. Yeah, Heisman winning quarterbacks after Heisman winning quarterback. So um, definitely a good program. A lot of a lot of um, good recruiting out there. Um, good boosters and some. Uh, Notable support from the uh, Los Angeles community, if you will. Yeah. Oh God, I'm I'm, I'm trying to like visualize this for a map of kind of like is there any area that we're missing? I mean, probably the Northeast. Probably do I do Harvard or Yale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick. The, the, Ryan Fitzpatrick the, went to Harvard. I mean, to to your point about trying to like spread the map out, I feel like Florida, Florida State. There's there's so much talent in Florida that it kind of justifies having two teams from Florida. Right. Part of me feels the same way about having Oklahoma State and Oklahoma being together. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like the Big Ten only has Ohio State. But unfortunately, I think the, as far as viewership and pull, the Big Ten probably yeah. has one one team really to be able to carry that way. As, as much as I want to pick Michigan, I was as much as I want to pitch Wisconsin, it's just not – there's not enough pull. Not right now. So – I'm I'm torn here. I really am. I'm, 
Is there a no. Northeast school? I mean, like, I, I know this sounds awful, and I feel dumb for asking it, but, like, I can't think of a team out of New York. Penn State was one that we kind of talked about. I mean, there's no one really, like, in the Massachusetts the, area. The Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills? Was it right. Right. <laughs> They're legit now, right? Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's – that's a trouble – to be the last pick in something like this is just kind of. I, I, Texas, Baylor, um, LSU um, is out there. I, I'm still, I'm still kind of pulling towards Oklahoma State, but Oklahoma State or Texas, I'm gonna go Baylor. Okay, okay, okay gonna, gonna change it. Bull trigger. They've been, they've been relevant enough, and Texas is a big bleeping state, and they have enough talent there. The same amount of talent that Florida has, but a little bit bigger of a state. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. A, I think Baylor's a surprise pick there. I'm. A little, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I mean, I know I said I was thinking about them, you know, too. I think that's a little bit of a surprise pick. Um, we are definitely covering the South. We've. De- I mean, God, how many SEC teams do we have? I'm shocked LSU didn't make it. Um, you have the power to change that. I know you don't. What's that? I, I lost count. I can't count. I can't do math. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we've we've got our teams. You know. Um, well, how about and how about somebody like a Washington that's uh kind of quietly has just you know working yeah, like years every year and you know making some uh Stanford some was one that I I, I kind of had on my list, yeah. Um, the, the, just you know, I, I'd like just to have that school or that university to kind of like a, as a part of it if you're gonna do one. I think we've had this conversation like off the off the interwebs, um, about like if I could be like the coach or be a kid, you know, attending any school, I think Stanford um you know home of the cardinal um would be probably up there on my list just because that's supposed to be just an experience um and i know like athletes aren't even really like the top guys on that campus uh because you've got like all those computer tech guys and everyone else you know on there um a lot of tradition you're surrounded by just brilliance (laughs) you know it'd be amazing joe so i mean you know regardless of how we slice the teams we could debate that for hours on end you know we came up with our 12 teams or whatever but if we did that however the teams were sliced is this good for college football right I mean what are the good what are the bad and what are the ugly Andy go ahead now imagine if we were diehard soccer fans trying to pick a super league yeah, yeah. I mean that we've done analogies as far as how can American fans feel what the super league did we're just I think all four of us are pretty, pretty heavy college football fans and we had to pick 12 teams and we have absolutely no dog in the fight. And we had to try and debate about regional poll or different divisions or different, whatever. And we're just kind of four, four, four guys drinking beer on a podcast. And we didn't even throw in things like um, sponsorships, you know, like what kind of deals, you know, like if, if, you know, Oregon, you know, is in the deal, does that mean we have to only pick other Nike schools um, you know, like who's, who's going to be funding this league? Because really, it's going to come down to the money. Yeah, but, sure, um, like that, you know, but uh, NBC with the uh, Notre Dame deal, TV deal. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that eliminates some options. But I, I think going back to Joe's question, like, is it good? I mean, like, is, is parity good or do we want them all in the same league? I would just say this, right? I mean, so the best thing about the European soccer leagues is that there's always the relegation factor is that the – worst teams in every league yeah it is it is great you know and so this would we would we have something like this you know and how would it get incorporated but i i just think that the mid so i'm a wisconsin guy right and so i would be personally kind of felt slighted by the fact that wisconsin can they get into the super league how does that work you know what i mean like are they just permanently out go ahead so no, if, if yeah. we use the same system we use now, we could easily say that the remaining of the, the other teams, the four tournament teams would then be the four bottom teams in this top 12. And the bottom four then would have to be booted back into the, you know, the other crowd. I think that could be something that would be. Oh, I bet there's going to be some kind of rules. And if this super league ever came to fruition of, you know, if you sign with us, you are no longer leaving. Like, the, if you leave, you are out, and you can never come back, you know, kind of deal. It, it, it's almost like the Amish, you know, like, if, if you... No more transfer portal, you know? Right, any of that kind of stuff. So you'll have to check my math on this, just because it's a it's a soccer thing I'm not super familiar with. Um, Nil means zero. Good on that. Pitch is the grass, yeah. 
Okay. Um, why not do some sort of tournament format? Format. I know there's something like was it the UEFA the UEFA Cup that's like the al- amalgamation of the European leagues, but like why not something like this and throw it in a tournament style where you can play it over the course of three or four weeks and it just like gets kind of amped up the way like Mark we got we got for March Madness. Yeah, I mean that, that that's a great point. You know, they have the UEFA Champions League, which is the previous year's champions kind of thrown all into one big bin, but the leagues are kind of all going on simultaneously. And I think the idea of the super league is that these teams would no longer be a part of their respective leagues. Like, you know, an Ohio state wouldn't be part of the big 10 anymore. They'd be part of the super league. And so they don't have to play the doormat games that they play now and within the big 10. And they would now be all part of this super league game. Every week is a highlight game. Now part of me really likes that. Because really, I mean, I know we have the college football playoff and stuff, which we love, but their playoff really would be the entire season because they're everyone's a playoff team. You know, everyone's a legit, you know, team. I mean, there's part of me that likes it. I mean, and I'd like to have a team. I, I mean, if I knew that my team was competitive and I knew that every single week, honestly, it was almost like watching Maryland basketball this year in the Big Ten, where every single game they were playing a ranked opponent. And there was something to that. And I, I mean, it didn't work out for them, but at the same time, um, it was great to watch. And For the league, they could essentially just, you know, have an 11 game season, like the old school way of doing things and just have 11 games and each game, not only just have 11 games, but each game being against this caliber of opponent, it would just be exponentially more pressure to play every week. To go back to Joe's, one of Joe's original questions was about, you know, what is it for college football in this example in our uh, imaginary world? I do think it's unequivocally not good for the sport as a whole, um, unless you're doing something with revenue sharing, because if you just have like, you know, these 12 powers eating up all the recruits, all the scholarship money, all of the income, whether it's tickets, whether it's jerseys, whether it's whatever else, you're losing scholarships downstream, right? Your, your bottom feeders of the even your power five are going to start to lose revenue. They're going to start to lose scholarships. You know, you have a bunch of kids that ordinarily would have played D1 football uh, on scholarship for four or five years or whatever now aren't getting that opportunity and what's that you know there's more uh, real life consequences to that so I do think it's um you know maybe there's there's different kinds of demons when you're talking about professional uh, soccer players in in Europe and um 18 and 19 year old college kids in the U.S. playing football but um I think there's a those are some significant consequences uh in, in our in our example yeah well now we've only got a few minutes left so I'm I guess I'm just going to ask you guys short and sweet um comparing it and doing the best we can here yeah, thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, I'll just ask you, you know, Joe, are you for it or against it? I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. I, I just like the, the idea that, you know, the Big Ten remains the Big Ten and they can debate all year long about which conference is the best. And I like some of the traditional rivalries. And I would like the idea that every season my team has an opportunity to make it to the top. No. Uh, thumbs down, mostly for the reasons I stated. It's going to be bad for some of the the downstream teams that aren't in that power, that Power Twelve or whatever you're going to call it. There's there's uh, going to be some significant ramifications there. Ink. I mean, it's it's a thumbs down. I mean, I, I read an article very very similar to what we've been doing tonight, like a what if. Now, if they were able to realign all of the Division One teams and do it strictly by geography and have like, you know. 16, 18 divisions and have it totally be strictly by logistics, that would be a little different, but we're kind of picking, we're taking the cream of the crop and then like having everybody else kind of be on their own. So it's definitely a thumbs down for me. Yeah, I I kind of lean towards the originally going, sounds awesome. Give me the best. I want to see the best teams play against each other every single week. But, you know, Andrew going off kind of what you were saying, I think there's more ramifications to that, um, you know, long-term and, 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 beating up the product and, and kids are involved and there's something about that I don't like. Um, so that being said, gentlemen, next week we're going to be talking about the draft. Um, it should be coming up. We may or may not have a guest on that week, um, you know, to give us a little bit of insight of what's going on in the draft. I'm going to be asking you guys most likely we're going to do a mock draft um, as well as if there's anybody in the draft that you are really looking forward to um, seeing them pan out um, or if you think they're overhyped. Um, but other than that, um, if you got anything left in your glasses, We'll raise them to you guys, as always. Cheers, Cheers, gentlemen. I hope you guys have a great week.